Okay, so if you enjoy trying to solve interesting and challenging math word problems, well, you're going to love this problem right here because even if you're strong in math, I think you're going to have to actually work to figure out the right answer. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the question. I'm going to read the question one time, and then I'm going to kind of uh, clarify uh, what's going on here because it can be a bit confusing. But here is the question. One-fifth of the air in a tank is removed with each stroke. What percent of the original amount remains after 10 strokes? All right, so what's going on here is that we have a tank and it has air in it. Now, uh, this stroke business is basically we have like a piston or some sort of device in this air tank or maybe some sort of pump that's pumping out the air in the tank. Now, each time this piston goes up and down, it removes one-fifth of the air uh, in the tank, right? So one stroke removes one-fifth of the air in the tank. So the question is, what percent of the original amount of air remains after 10 strokes? All right, so that is the question. And if you have a pretty good background in algebra, you should be able to figure this out. But don't give up so soon and feel free to use a calculator. All right, so if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this uh, problem. So one fifth of the air in a tank is removed with each stroke. Again, we're starting off with an original amount of air in this tank and this piston device. Each time it takes one stroke, it takes out one fifth of the air in that tank. All right, so what percent, and I'm kind of highlighting this word right here as a clue, what percent of the original amount remains after 10 strokes? All right, so let's take a look at the right answer. It is approximately 11%. So if you got like 10 point something, well, I think you did this problem right, What, uh, which uh, definitely warrants a happy face and an A++. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say take the rest of the year off. You uh, certainly know what you're doing. I think you might be watching that guy on YouTube. But uh, that is fantastic. And if you are confused, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm pretty strong in algebra and I'm totally lost here. Well, as I indicated, this is not like the easiest uh, problem to figure out. Now, uh, I would say if um, you've taken, well, maybe even like the al maybe Algebra 1, certainly Algebra 2, you should have enough math uh, skill and knowledge to figure this out. But it's not going to be so obvious what to do. But let's take another look at the problem because we want to apply the rule of three, which is read a problem at least three times uh, before you start doing anything. Now, I've already read the problem. Uh, a couple, two or three times, and I you know, kind of explain what's going on. But anytime you are faced with a math word problem, if you're like confused about what's going on, well, there's not, really not going to be much of a chance that you're going to figure it out. So, you know, if you're a math student, if you're taking an exam, raise your hand and try to get clarification or read the problem until you understand it and understand the question and then start to kind of work on it. But uh, once you understand the information and the question, what we want to do is try to model what's going on here. So again, we have this uh, air tank or tank or air in a tank, and then we have one fifth of this air is being removed with each stroke of something like a piston, right? Some sort of pump device that's removing air out of this tank. So what percent of the original amount remains after 10 strokes? So this is where you're going to have to get creative and try uh, uh, to kind of detect a pattern on what's going on. So the best way to do that is uh, simply kind of like model, you know, a situation. So here is, for example, my little depiction of an air tank, and then maybe this is like a piston inside. Now, you know, if you're not really familiar with these mechanical devices, that is okay. But, uh, you know, I did try to, you know, set you up for success by explaining to you kind of like, you know, basically uh, what's going on in this problem. All right, now here is the kind of the really, the secret to figuring this problem out. So we need to look for patterns. 
So here, we're starting off with a full air tank, or, or uh, maybe it's not even full, but we have an original amount of air in this tank. Okay, now whether it's completely full or it's 90% full, it doesn't make a difference. So we have an original amount of air. Let's call that amount T, okay? We're just gonna call it T for now. So T, uh, this uh, variable represents the amount of air that's originally in this uh, air tank. Now the question says that one fifth of the air is removed with each stroke. So what we have to imagine is, all right, so we have this original amount. Now our pump or our piston is going to take one stroke. It's gonna go up and down and remove some air from the tank. So how much remains or how much is in our tank after our first stroke, okay? Well, hopefully you're saying, well, if you removed one fifth out of the, um, if you remove one fifth for each stroke, well, what's gonna be remaining is four fifths, right? Because one minus uh, one fifth is going to be four fifths because one is the same thing as five over five, right? That's one. So of course, you know, basic fractions here, we're going to have four fifths remaining. So after our first stroke, we're going to have four fifths of the original amount or four fifths T, okay? Remember the original amount of air here is T. So after stroke one, we're going to, we're going to have four fifths T. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, take another stroke on this piston thing here. So how much is going to remain in our tank after the second stroke? Well, what we need to do is take four fifths of how much is in the tank after the first stroke. So we have this amount of air in the tank now. So after we take another stroke, we're going to basically just take four fifths of this amount and that's what's gonna be remaining after the second stroke. So it's gonna be four fifths of what was in uh, the tank after the first stroke, which is four fifths T. Okay, so we have four fifths of four fifths T. Okay, so that's how much is in the second stroke. So we can just continue this pattern on and on. And what we're looking for is some sort of mathematical model on, you know, um, that we can use to solve this problem. All right, so how much remains um, after the third stroke? Well, it's gonna be four fifths of how much was uh, in, uh, in our air tank. Excuse me, I'm kind of babbling here, but uh, it's uh, how much, it's gonna be four fifths of how much remained after our second stroke. Okay, so I'm really kind of trying to take my time here because this can be confusing. So how much was in our tank after our second stroke was, well, it was four fifths of four fifths T or four times four is what? That's 16 over five times five, that's 25, right? So we're gonna have four fifths of 16 over 25 T, right? So this is the amount here. Okay, so this is the pattern of what's going on. Now we can continue this on all the way till we get to, uh, our 10th stroke, but that's gonna be a lot of work because if I asked you, you know, how much would remain after let's say stroke 28, well, that is just gonna to be too arduous. So what you wanna do here is try to find a mathematical or, or an algebraic um, description or rule that basically generalizes what's going on here, all right? So if you could kind of take a look at this and figure it out, well, that is going to be fantastic, but I'm gonna show you what's going on right here. Okay, so we have an exponential function, or we can express what's going on here as an exponential function. So you gotta look for patterns, and uh, I'm gonna show you this in just one second. So we have four fifths t, where t is the number of strokes, right? So this is our exponential function. Now you might be highly confused, but this is our rule. This basically is going to describe what's going on here. So let's go ahead and test this real quick. So t equals the number of strokes. Well, if we have zero strokes, we're gonna have what? We're going to have four fifths to the zero. Anything to the zero power is one. So we have a full 100% uh, in our tank with no strokes remaining. Okay, that makes sense. Well, how about after our first stroke? So if t is one, we're going to have what? Well, that's gonna be four fifths to the first power, which of course is four fifths of that tank, right? And that's exactly what we have. We have four fifths of this tank. Now, if we follow this pattern here, uh, you remember after our second stroke, we have 16 over 25 T, but uh, here we can kind of um, use this function, this exponential function again, 
And after our uh, second stroke, where t is 2, we're going to have what? We're going to have 16 over 25, right? And, of course, that is going to be uh, times t, which is the amount of air in here. But that's not going to be so critical here. What we're looking for um, uh, is some sort of pattern that describes the percentage or the next part or how much this tank is going down. So we need a rule, and the rule here is this exponential function. All right, so if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think what you're going to do is uh, figure out what uh, T is, because T is the number of strokes, and we're looking for how much or what percent of the tank remains after our 10th stroke. Well, yes, indeed, that is where we are going. But I want to speak a, a bit here about exponential functions. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of just summarize where we're at. So here is our air tank. Here is our piston. It's going up and down each time it, uh, there is a stroke. Right? Uh, what's going on? Well, this tank decreases by one fifth, but we're not talking about a linear one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth. It's going to be one fifth of what was uh, remaining. All right. So this can be confusing. So again, here is our kind of uh, just a review of the general setup if you want to kind of follow it. So T again is our original amount of air after our first stroke. We're going to have four fifths of the original amount after our second stroke. We're going to have to we're going to have four fifths of what we had after the first stroke, right? And then on uh, on uh, to the third stroke, that's four-fifths of what was remaining in the second stroke, and uh, on and on. Okay, so you can see here that even this problem is giving me a little bit of uh, trouble stumbling and bumbling. So if you're confused, maybe what you want to do is just pause the video, think about this, make sure you are good to go up to this point, because we still have some more work to do. But anyways, here is our exponential function, 4 fifths t, where t is the number of strokes. All right, so I want to talk about exponential functions here because this is a very important topic in mathematics. Now, here is an exponential function. Now, it's not exactly um, our 4 fifths t, but an exponential function is a function where the variable is in the exponent spot. So remember when you have a power like 2 to the third uh, power, uh, this little number in the top right is the exponent. This big number down here is the base. The entire thing is a power. So when you have a function, okay, now here this is an equation, but let me get a little bit more precise. When we have a function like f of x is equal to 4 fifths to the x, where um, our variable uh, is in the exponent location, this is by definition an exponential function. Now, these are extremely important functions. Matter of fact, if you're uh, familiar with compound interest, compound interest is an example of exponential growth. So let's go ahead and just uh, do a quick, quick uh, review of this. This is something that you absolutely need to know if you're at, oh, I would say, uh, the Algebra 1 level or um, beyond. Okay, you start studying this at like the first year Algebra level. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if you were to graph this graph right here, it will look like so. This is what we call exponential decay. Now, uh, we have x and we have y. So what is y when x is equal to 0? Well, it's going to be what? 4 fifths to the 0 power, which is 1. Okay, so our graph is going to intercept the y-axis at 1, and then it's going to be decreasing. So our x here, okay, is the same thing as our function where we have t being the number of strokes, right? So we can kind of think of this x as the variable t. So as we take more strokes, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to have less and less air in our tank, okay? So this is an example of what we call exponential decay. Now, one thing that you need to know about exponential functions is that they're either going to kind of go this way or they're going to go this way. We, matter of fact, you can kind of actually translate them in uh, other ways as well. But exponential decay, where things are kind of decaying nice and slow, and that's how you would describe this, uh, the general graph looks like this. Now, what's an example of exponential decay? Well, if you're familiar with like uh, radioactive material, it starts, uh, well, I think, um, I'm trying to recall here, there's like a half-life, right? So uh, how much time, you know, is it until this radioactive material decays down to half of its original amount? And then after, you know, the, that material decays that fast, 
then the rest of this amount is going to decay and it's going to take a long, long, long time to finally decay. So like radioactive material decaying, right, till finally down to zero, uh, that's an example of exponential uh, decay. All right, so I'm kind of, you know, really throwing a lot here because I want to walk, uh, I want you to walk away from this problem, you know, really have an appreciation for the math that you learned. Now, compound interest is an example of exponential growth. Now, when you look at an exponential function, let's notice here that our base is what? Our base is less than one, okay? So four fifths is less than one. So when your base on an exponential function is less than one, you're gonna have exponential decay. If your base is greater than one, so for example, if you had like five fourths or three, like three to the X power, well, you're gonna have exponential growth. And that would be an example of like compound interest. And effectively that graph is gonna look pretty similar. It's gonna be like this in a general form. All right, so these are big, important topics. And I know I'm kind of turning this into a little micro lesson here because I just can't <laughs> help myself as a math teacher. I'm like, oh, I gotta make sure that um, those of you that are with me at this point walk away with uh, you know a sense of you know these exponential functions decay and growth and again if you want to improve in this you kind of uh, know the topics to study all right so our situation again is exponential decay our base is less than zero so each stroke you know the amount of air in this tank is going to go down and down and down but it's not going to be linear it's not like this it is decaying nice and slow like so all right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish up this lovely problem. Now, um, you know, I try to put um, a lot of work into these videos. Now, you know, I don't try, I actually do, but uh, I do my best to um, really, you know, not to over teach in these particular videos because I don't want to turn this into like a full algebra course and then, hey, let's do a problem because that's too much for one particular video. But what I try to do is to make math interesting and easy to understand and to really kind of give you guidance uh, on you know uh, different uh, topics in mathematics so you can improve. But there is a time and place for YouTube videos and there's a time and place for full math instruction. Okay, so if you wanna learn more from me, if you like my uh, teaching style, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And uh, kind of the math that we're talking about here would be like algebra one, algebra two, uh, and a war pre-calculus. You can find all those courses in the description, but I need your help to reach as many people as possible, right? So the best way you can support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get back to the problem. All right, so one fifth of the air in a tank is removed with each stroke of like a piston. What percent, right? So I highlight this um, word in the beginning here, what percent of the original uh, amount in the tank remains after 10 strokes? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our lovely exponential function to work. So we have four fifths T, right? So this models what's going on here where T is the number of strokes. So we wanna figure out what this is equal to when T is equal to 10. All right, so four fifths to the 10th power. So we're gonna have to get our calculators out. But when we do this, we're gonna get about point uh, 1073. Now, some of you might be like really happy, like, yay, yay, I uh, solved the problem. Well, remember, uh, the question is what? It says, what percent of the original amount? So we're going to have to take this 0 0.013 and turn it into a percent. So how do we uh, change a, a decimal to percent? Well, you just move the decimal point over two places to the right or multiply by 100. So we're going to get 10.73 percent, but we can kind of round that up to 11 percent. All right, so as I promised, this wasn't going to be so easy. Now, if you found this problem easy and you had a more direct approach to solving it, that is fantastic, right? But I think the key here is to look for patterns. Once you understand the question, you're gonna have to work at what, you know, work at um, you know, developing different models so you can uh, detect a pattern. Now here, I didn't kind of give you any uh, hints like, hey, we're gonna be doing a exponential uh, math word problem. You know, uh, I don't like to do that because some of you out there, you know, could probably figure this out using a different technique, right? So I kind of like to keep things nice and general. But anyways, if you were able to figure this out, that is super impressive. 
And if you learn something, well, that's the whole point in this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.